Hi guys, um, and welcome to Sergio's Structural Engineering channel. Today, I would like to discuss with uh, all of you um, about the design and the construction of reinforced concrete uh, pedestals. Um, I was very curious about this uh, foundation element because my education was always um, uh, around uh, about buildings and, and uh, casting plates, uh, uh, spread footings, okay? But um, I was not aware about the, the, the pedestals. The first time that I, I, I met the solution uh, was when I was hired by my actual company, and then uh, I was um, uh, facing uh, projects or developing projects in the oil and gas uh, uh, field engineering. You know? So um, that's when I was aware about the the particularities and uh, the special conditions that uh, this uh, element can uh, provide to uh, our projects. Okay, so um, uh, today uh, we're going to discuss about uh, design, the profits, or the profits and, uh, and the disadvantages that the, the structural um, foundation element uh, can provide and um, why not uh, to uh, make some a critical discussion about the design that uh, I was always, you know, uncomfortable. You no, know? and then I would like to I would like to share uh, my concerns with all of you. So, uh, if you want to come with me and I want to follow, let's go on. For those who are not familiar with the uh, pedestal uh, solution, um, I would like to show in this uh, in this uh, hand sketch. Uh, the difference between, uh, let's say, a typical spread footing for, for a building, and the one indicated at the left, uh, the top left part of the, of the image, okay, and the uh, design of, a, or the section, transversal section, for um, a footing, okay, for, a, let's say, a typical industrial or facility uh, structure like a pie rack, okay? So where it is very typical that the foundation is located in the, you know, um, with an overboarding, overboarding soil, and then you have like a, 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 um, a, the pedestal um, that is getting outside from the top of the pavement, okay? So th this is the major difference, no? So that you can you can have the, the structure, okay, that can burn, or the columns can burn directly from the top of the foundation, okay? Like the example that we, uh, we show with a with a building, okay. On on the other side, we can have a let's say a short column, okay, short column. Then uh, that it's you know is is growing from the top of the of the spread footing, and then you know it is uh, uh let's say overpassed in in one hundred and fifty or two hundred millimeters from the highest uh, point of the pavement, okay. So the advantages for the using a, a pedestal are very related with the uh, oil and gas or with uh, industrial facilities. Um, the main idea is that uh, uh, it is supposed that concrete, the concrete is, is more, um, is, is waterproof. Mm? Um, and and the, the idea is to uh, locate uh, the, the basement of the steel structure, okay, um, uh, rise from the, from the floor, avoiding to create corrosion or to damage uh, for the the water contact or for the moisture to the steel structure. Okay, so that is one of the main conditions. Uh, the, the 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 let's say the second uh, the second advantages of the using a pedestal is that we have an, a gap between the pavement, okay, and the top of the footing. No? Okay, as you can see in the in the right part of the of the right part of the of the picture. Okay, and then um, why we, we put that gap? Why we uh, put uh, we have that soil overboarding uh, over the spread footing? Then then we can use this this gap this this height uh, um, to have layouts of piping underground on services. Uh, okay, so that is very typical in um, in industrial facilities. No? And the number of uh, layouts are, are huge and a number and, and um, enormous. Um, um, this gives us the possibility to include new uh, layout design for piping uh, uh, in the uh, uh, for the, for the future expansion plans, future future expansion for every every kind of plant. Okay, the other the other or the third condition or the third advantage of the system is that sometimes the 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 industrial the industrial uh, steel structure um, are um, are uh, 
let's say light okay if we compare it with a building uh, the delta dose of the on a steel structure even including the uh, uh, heaviest uh, pipelines or, or whatever they are um, usually light structures so they, these these structures are very affected by um, let's say horizontal forces so so in most of the times it is needed uh, to create an, uh, an uh, uh, a, a counter a counter lift okay so the the structure is going to uh, or the foundation is going to be subjected to to uplifting no so it is necessary to um let's gen let's say generate weight over the spread footing in order to counterbalance um those uh, uprising rising forces no um we are not going to enter into detail uh, we are going to do it uh, later in the picture, I show the construction of those elements uh, in one of, uh, of the projects I was um, participating actively uh, years ago. Okay, so you can see in the man in the image. Okay, that first of all we have to cast in, in place the spread footing, and over uh, one one it is uh, the concrete is pure. Okay, and uh, you know have a let's say some kind of uh, strength. Okay compression strength then we can we can uh, continue uh, with the construction of the the pedestal no? uh, in the picture you can see the, the let's say the props okay and that it's fixing the the phone work okay and also you can see also the the anchor ball layouts no? that they are uh, embedded uh, inside the, the reinforcement okay? okay after after uh, okay in a, in a while we will discuss uh, about the, the transferring of forces Okay, but I just like I uh, want to show you only the construction uh, phases of these uh, pedestals. Now in the picture, it is shown just uh, the um, uh, huge numbers of uh, of uh, combined uh, and uh, foundations. Okay, combined and and uh, single or spread the footing foundation for a uh, uh, longitudinal big longitudinal. Uh, by a rack okay it is a uh, it was called train okay and the the picture was taken by myself again okay, in saudi arabia okay so uh, you can see first in the in the in the, in the first uh, combined uh, uh, spread footing you can see the the two pedestals okay uh, uh, coming coming up from the from the that mat foundation that combined uh, footing okay as you can see the 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 the, the black color it is it is curious no i would like to pay attention about that no it is uh, very typical to uh, to apply some some coating okay uh, bituminous uh, coating in order to protect uh, the concrete against any chemical um, additional aggression examples of uh, pedestal uh, reinforced concrete pedestals during a construction stage okay uh, at the right you can see also that the, uh, the phone work it is uh, phone work it's located uh, in order to place the grout okay usually we are going to have the pedestal and the concrete up to one elevation and then the the the, the space of the gap between the steel um, base plate and the top of the of the concrete pedestal is going to be a fillet with um it's going to be filled with um with a groot okay and then in the right side of the of the image and the second uh, for, uh, picture you can see like uh, the anchor ball is protruding okay uh, over the base plate of the steel structure it is already erected okay but uh, of course uh, you can see that the growth is, has not been uh, um, it has not been uh, casted or applied okay over the in the pedestal a very 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 good good construction practice as you can see it is the 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 top of the concrete is is cheap you no know? uh, cheap uh, it is like a that little ab abrasion okay uh, over the surface in order to provide uh, uh, friction okay between the friction between the base plate and the, and the concrete in order to uh, to improve okay the the transferring of the horizontal forces between the steel structure and the pedestal and the foundation. We also have this close view for the for the system. As you can see, the excavation is already is already finished, and also the backfilling is already compacted. Okay, and um, the activity for construction is it is finished. So so uh, at this moment, you can see that the the foundation, the previous one that we have we we share I share with you in the previous image. Okay, it is already covered by the soil. And you can see also the chipped area at the top, uh, how the structure is is uh, placed placed at the 
at the top of the pedestal and it is only resting uh, to be performed the grotted okay uh, to fill the gap between the best plate and the top of the concrete pedestal once we have discussed about the definition of precast uh, in terms of uh, possibilities advantages and uh, uh, construction construction stage uh, let's go go deeper into the design okay so I, I am in for for that matter I represented here a transversal section for a typical let's say pyrac steel structure okay um and what is the let what is the uh, in terms of structural engineering what is the a pedestal okay so a pedestal let's say it is like a continuation for the steel structure that uh, wants to uh, okay bring uh, or transfer properly uh, all the many moment axial forces and shear forces uh, from the steel extractor to the foundation okay so if we go deeper in detail let's say with spread footing okay and um, make uh, the extract, extractor let's say a little bigger okay the steel extractor is going to transfer um just with colors it's going to transfer uh, compressions, okay? Or uh, it's going to be transfer tension forces, okay? For sure, we are going to have bending moments, bending moments, and of course, if we have bending moments, we are going to have for sure shears, shear forces. Put it that way. Okay, so the the uh, reinforced concrete pedestal uh, must be able uh, to or to have has to be designed to have the capacity to transfer those those uh, all those all those forces in many moments transfers properly to the spread footing and therefore uh, and continuity uh, we, we, for continuity the spread footing has to transmit. Uh, okay directly to the to the soil okay so it is very important uh, I mean the, um, it becomes a critical it becomes a critical element no the pedestal becomes a critical element no? where it is going to be uh, concentrated uh, a lot of efforts and um, it has to be combined uh, the the work of the concrete the reinforced uh, the reinforcement of the of the pedestal itself and also and very important how the anchor balls is going to be embedded inside the pedestal and how it's going to be transfer the forces between the uh, the anchor balls to the surrounded reinforced uh, concrete so in order to be more accurate uh, it is represented in the picture the three diagrams uh, about the the forces and many moments that can act simultaneously in the, the pedestal. Assuming, of course, the pedestal it is fixed or has a fixed condition at the top of the spread footing. Okay, so we can we can have here axial forces. Okay, can be compression or or, or tension. Uh, okay, they can compress and go going down. Okay, uh, against the spread foot, you know, we can have uplifting. Okay, depends on the on the conditions. We can, of course, we are going to have a bending moment, and it, it is it is expected that the bending moment is going to be higher, and the connection between the uh, the bottom of the pedestal and the top of the spread footing, and of course, uh, as we have uh, as a derivate, we are going to have bending moment for sure. We are going to be shear. Okay, that is going it is supposed to be, and it is going to be expected to be uh, the constant. Uh, as, as as long as the the bending moment the relationship is going to be linear okay so assuming this uh, design the uh, uh, bending moment and actual uh, compression forces or shear forces design uh, diagrams uh, we are going uh, we are going to the design the pedestal as as it was like a, a typical column okay so it's going to be a, a column in, uh, placed uh, or similar to a cantilever, okay, subjected to all those uh, those elements. So, in terms of uh, 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 normal stresses, uh, we are going to uh, make the design using a uh, interaction diagram, okay. When we are going to have uh, axial forces and, and moments, okay. So we are going to have a, a couple, a couple of forces, okay, 
and D and MD that has to be inside, let's say, this this profile inside the, this equation. In terms of the of the shear, okay. In terms of the shear, uh, we should uh, design. Okay, we can take into account not only uh, the uh, the uh, concrete uh, transversal section, but also you can take into account all the steel ropes here. Okay, all the steel ropes. So. Um, normally, a slenderness is not a, is not a, is not a problem. So backlink has, has little influences uh, uh, about the design because also uh, it is supposed that the soil uh, surrounding the, the pedestal is, is keeping uh, keeping away the backlink phenomena. So in terms of the of the design, uh, uh, in terms of concrete design, is just a, um, the pedestal is just a verification like it was a, a typical column. For sure, one of the critical conditions is how to transfer from the anchor bolt that are embedded inside the pedestal the forces to the rest of the of the element and then to be transferred, you know, at the bottom of the spread footing. Here we have an uh, uh, I think a very clear image. Okay, as you can see that we have the the tensile forces here. Okay, indicated with uh, this this vector, these forces T. Okay. And normally, as you can see in the in the in the representation, okay, when we have an anchor ball, an anchor ball, we have an a uh, reaction element at the bottom. Okay, can be for example a welded nut, a welded nut, okay, or, or other kind of device that uh, what it's trying to do is to push, push. Or to compress the concrete surrounded here, okay, due to the uh, the presence of the of a, a, a tension forces, okay. So, um, okay, it is supposed that you are going to be here. You can see in the in the, in the sketch, okay, that we are going to have a, a break, okay. Sorry, we're going to have a break, uh, break of the concrete, okay. Expecting to have, you know, according to experimentally, experimental conditions about the thirty-five, five degrees. Okay, and one, uh, one way uh, to to uh, to tie, okay, or to cross, okay, that fracture plane is uh, taking into account the longitudinal, longitudinal reinforcement rebar located at the perimeter. Okay, that also uh, create create some kind of uh, problem that because okay. Uh, with a with the anchor ball that is located uh, close to the perimeter, let's say or the side of the of the perimeter, this crack of the concrete can be, you know, uh, uh, like a, uh, a cross uh, by a, a rebar. But uh, we are not going to we are going not to have any solution for the crack. Okay, uh, that is directly or appear inside the the vest. Okay. Um, this configuration, this configuration, this mechanism to transfer important uh, tension of forces, okay, uh, from the anchor ball to the uh, rebar or the pedestal, um, obliges, okay, that we are going to have. I'm going to put it in blue. We are going to have here a development length, okay, development length, because otherwise uh, this fracture cannot be uh, tied uh, properly, okay. So um, this, uh, with these conditions, uh, we establish some geometrical rules. Okay, uh, um, the reinforcement uh, should should have a development length accordingly with this thirty five degrees, expected degrees, uh, with the fracture plane of the concrete, and then uh, with this thirty five degrees, we can uh, define the effective, the effective, effective length of the of the uh, anchor bolt embedded inside the, the pedestal we also have to keep in mind that uh, uh, the base the steel base plate also and the anchor bolts um, uh, transfer shear forces shear forces um, shear forces to the pedestal okay that has to be okay um, designed properly okay in order to uh, Avoid, avoid any any fracture in this in this matter. 
um, also if the, if the shear forces are very uh, very significant in the design it is better to be resisted it is better to be transferred to the pedestal through okay shear keys okay shear keys as uh, as the as the one uh, it is are represented in the in the in the pictures okay but uh nevertheless uh, the concrete is the the latest material to uh, to have the enough 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 strength uh, to transfer that shear forces no so this is a, a complicated delicated uh, detail uh, uh, to be developed in any uh, type of project not following uh, uh, right uh, right uh, requirements in the design of the reinforced concrete pedestal can drive us to um, suffer pathologies like the one uh, shown in the picture and you can see that the cracks that is uh, uh, coming uh, from the from the uh, um, edges of the base plate and go th uh, to the uh, external uh, corner of the concrete pedestal or even worse uh, to create um, a collapse like the one shows in the in the picture okay so um, um, we have to recognize that the pedestal and um, um, the place where the anchor bolts are embedded in the in the inside uh, the concrete uh, is a delicate and, um, and um, complicated detail that has to be verified um, verified by expertise and um, senior engineers okay and there are so many factors involved in the in the in the collapse that is shown in the in the picture but uh, of course the uh, maybe the, the excessive cover uh, the quality of the concrete uh, or or even the, the lack of uh, confinement reinforcement um, uh, can um, give us the reason uh, can give us the reason of the of the the failure that is uh, shown in the picture I would like to bring your attention this time to the uh, recommendation of the ACI 318 um, that um, developed the design of the building structure. It is true that this um, may be one of the design, uh, concrete code, code designs that mention directly the, the word pedestal, um, even though the, the element, the foundation element is more or less recognized in European, uh, European codes, but it is true that it is the only one, is the only one international code that uh, the pedestal is, uh, let's say, um, in somehow uh, completely developed. No? So one of the main conditions is the the, the reinforcement, longitudinal reinforcement. Um, it is the minimum uh, uh, ratio should be uh, zero point zero zero five the gross area of the of the cross section. Okay, this is very important. Also, the detail that we should uh, we normally uh, forget is that uh, uh, we should place uh, a certain number of stirrups at the bottom, I'm sorry, at the top of the pedestal, uh, equal space uh, and, uh, in a distance no longer than 125 mm, okay? And, um, well, in terms of the, um, in terms of the, of the, of the shear, uh, um, we, uh, we, we should, uh, you know, take into account the shear free and, uh, fraction of provisions in order that the, um, uh, the the longitudinal reinforcement uh, should tie uh, the the construction joint between the the top of the foundation and the and the bottom of the pedestal. This time, um, in a graphically way, we would like to summarize one of those conditions. One um, um, just um, some of the conditions that is uh, established by the ACI uh, three one eight. Okay, one of them is you can see here. Okay. You can see here it is the uh, the minimum uh, um, uh, reinforcement uh, ratio to be uh, uh, to be used. Okay, uh, also very important uh, the uh, here at the top right uh, part of the figure uh, we can find uh, the equal space uh, equal space stirrups uh, that is also requested in order to provide an additional uh, confinement uh, to the uh, to the top of the the pedestal. Okay, um, and also uh, for the for the for the the spread footing itself, also uh, if it is needed, uh, uh, the orientation of the hook to be inside uh, inside the part of the pedestal due to a special uh, condition for earthquake or 
or uh, highly demand the utility uh, in case of important and tension, uh, and tension stresses or there is a free end orientation for the rebar of the of the pedestal okay this part of the post i would like to discuss with all of you um, some concerns about this this pedestal um, um, normally in terms of uh, uh, we are most of the time development uh, develop an engineering solution that is um, uh, you know let's say easier uh, to be built you know, at site, but in my opinion, I have some doubts from a central point of view. Uh, I will I will go in detail, okay, with my my, uh, my sketch, okay. Okay, we represent here, let's say the footing, okay, and the pedestal, okay, in blue, and uh, we are going to use another color for the rebar, okay, make it in in red, normally, normally. All the longitudinal rebar, okay, are placed, placed at the perimeter, okay, and there is a here a straight, straight cut, okay. So if we are going to see the section from the upper side, of course we have here the pedestal, okay, and with another color, once again red. We have the reinforcement. Okay. As as long as the as the rebar is straight, you know, and end at this plane, you can put easily, you can place easily the angle bolts without expecting any glassing or any disturbance between these different elements, no? okay? We put here, for example, the anchor bolts in green, okay? So we are going to have here the protruding, okay, element, and here too, you, know, you will find the effective, the effective height of the anchor bolts, okay? So from the same of a construction point of view, the straight solution, it is fine, no? Okay, from from a structural point of view, I have my doubts. As 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 I said before, uh, we have to we want to have a structural design. Okay, for the for every section, every section of the pedestal. Okay, according to a uh, diagram uh, axial uh, bending moment. Okay, diagram uh, diagram. Okay, um, and and the diagram. Okay, according to the axial forces. Okay, if we have to uh, consider, we have to consider the axial capacity of the concrete section and also included the capacity for the for the rebar itself in terms of compression. This I put it in blue. This reinforcement should be completely developed. Should be completely anchored. Okay, um, if we are going to have a straight solution, just to make the life of our builders easier, we are not going to have the fully, the fully capacity, the fully the capacity to do rebar until reach the development length. Okay, so um, I'm, you know, I'm so critical with this, uh, with this solution. Um, it is easier to understand the, the problem in terms of axial forces, the compression forces, okay, uh, but also it's quite difficult to, to find it in the uh, with the shear, with the shear, okay. So um, with the shear, it is the same. We are going to oblige to have this um, rebar longitudinal rebar has to be properly anchored because otherwise we are not going to be able. Uh, to close, you know, our scheme of forces to transfer a uh, shear, shear forces, no? So um, that is a, a, a typical discussion that I, um, I you know, um, handle, um, but, the, you know, the solution uh, in terms of construction is very easy. It is, um, let's say, a standard solution, but um, I'm, you know, um, 
my suggestion is that the at least uh, the corner or uh, reward should be um, should be displayed with a, a hook in order uh, to uh, uh, to properly anchor uh, uh, rebars for the very beginning of the top of the pedestal. My proposal, my suggestion, as uh, in accordance with the lack of development length for the energy doing of reinforcement, okay, in the very beginning of the top of the pedestal, is to provide uh, uh, hooks, okay, and or even though better uh, to close uh, the space with uh, U bars, okay, in order to splice them with the straight, the straight doubles, no, uh, uh, with that condition we guarantee that uh, we can take into account uh, a longitudinal reinforcement in order to uh, uh, add compression capacity to the section uh, from the very beginning, okay? And not expecting to have uh, the development length to take into account the capacity of the rebar reinforcement. Otherwise, other possibility is to consider uh, uh, the concrete as a, as a plain concrete, okay? Uh, that will be, of course, the you know, the honest way to, to focus the problem. But uh, unfortunately, with uh, that will uh, generate an, uh, huge uh, pedestals uh, with uh, big dimensions that uh, um, they, are not, uh, they are not, let's say, practical and of course an economical uh, solution. I will also uh, would like to point it out, uh, my concerns about the, uh, that, that mechanisms to transfer uh, tension forces from the anchor ball uh, to the perimeter uh, doubles or longitudinal rebar. No? As uh, we can see uh, before, uh, there is a, a cone, a fracture cone, generated by the uh, the tension uh, activity of the of the anchor bolt, and uh, that uh, that uh, fracture and that crack, it is only tied by the external by the external uh, reinforcement located at the perimeter of the pedestal. My suggestion uh, that I was applied them, apply the solution in many in many projects also is to use a, a dowel, yeah, okay, a dowel surrounded uh, or close to the, the head or the bottom of the anchor bolt, okay, in order to uh, keep under control, under control that crack, okay. Um, um, uh, if you tight that possible crack close to the origin of the of the, com the strong compression forces from the reaction element to the concrete, uh, I'm sure that uh, we are going to uh, to have the problem uh, under control uh, um, and also we are going to have a, let's say, less um, crack section for the very beginning, okay? Um, as you can see, well, um, and the, you, you have the mechanisms represented at the right. Um, some example from the, what we are trying to, to avoid no? is to uh, some examples of an, a test performed with some post uh, installed anchor bolts. No? Uh, this is the cone, uh, the cone extraction, uh, the fracture cone uh, created by the breakout of the, of the concrete. And as you can see, the, the 35, uh, 35 degree it is very reasonable and it is supported by the experimental test. We are reaching to the end of our journey for today. And, uh, this is the end of the, of the, the video. I hope you really uh, enjoy it. I, I have to acknowledge that I, I did it okay, also. And um, I hope to see you in a next post or, or video. Um, please uh, remember to, to subscribe to the Sergio Estructural uh, Engineering channel for more contents like this. Uh, don't forget to visit my profile in, in LinkedIn, uh, the social network. Um, and um, nothing to, to add today. Uh, take care, uh, goodbye, see you next time.